Hi friends, welcome back. Now today we are going to have a new chapter, so that is data sufficiency. Right. Data sufficiency is such an important chapter from this one. In every competitive exam, definitely they are asking some questions. If you take any bank examination, probably that is IBPS, RS, BIPO or RBI grade B officers or such an exam, definitely there are five questions out of this one. Right? Five questions they are giving from reasoning, uh, uh, reasoning part and uh, five more questions they may give from quantitative aptitude also. Right? If you are lucky enough, you can get uh, uh, 5 plus 5, 10 questions in the examination. Now, how to crack these questions? Many students are getting confused uh, to go for data sufficiency questions. I will give you the complete concept of this one with the help of which I hope you can do 5 out of 5 correct in the examination. Now, let's start this one. Data sufficiency chapter, for that matter, any other chapter, I teach in this way. First, we go for how many questions you can expect in this examination, right? Particularly if you go for banks, because data sufficiency mostly asked in bank exams only. How many questions you can expect? Then, what is the format of the question? How they look in the examination? Then, followed by what is the concept, the complete concept of that? Then, I'll go for a shortcut, if any, or blind method so that uh, you can get the accuracy accuracy because in this type of examinations you should get uh, uh, speed speed and uh, accuracy both are very important for this one all right not like academic exams here 100 percent accuracy is required pinpoint accuracy is required now how to get this accuracy to get the accuracy obviously unconditional practice is required but you can practice the questions only when you know the concept of the chapter. You need to squeeze out the chapter, right? So now, whenever we start any chapter, we will go in this way. Now, data sufficiency is not an exception for that. Let us go for this one. Now, first, let us take up the format of the question. What type of questions you can expect from this chapter? In data sufficiency, two to three models are there. In this session, I am going to discuss the uh, basic model of the questions, how they give in the examination. First, they ask one question. Listen carefully. First, they ask a question, right? Followed by statement one and statement two, right? Statement one and two are otherwise taken as clues to answer the question. Data are provided here. Now, with the help of these clues, you need to answer the question. Then followed by, uh, in bank PO examination, generally give five options for you. Right? The options are like this. Go for option number one. If you feel only first alone is sufficient to answer the question, whereas second alone is not sufficient. Then second option, first alone is not sufficient. Second alone is sufficient to answer the question question. Now the third one is either one alone is sufficient or two alone is sufficient to answer the question. The fourth one is neither one nor two is sufficient to answer the question. Still more data are required. Then fifth option is both one and two together are necessary to answer the question. These are the options. But uh, we can't say that every time the options are in the same sequence. Of course, options are same, but may not be in the same sequence. Sometimes they shuffle that one also. You please be careful about that one. Once they shuffle that one, you need to mark the answer according to the shuffling. Or sometimes even they give in this way. One question they will give. Generally, one question means first directions. Five options are there. For all the five questions, options are same. But sometimes what happens? Every question they change the options. Options in, in the sense sequence of the options will be changed. You do accordingly. Now, the next question is how to crack the question. The first and very important thing is that you need to understand the question properly. You need to find out uh, what exactly is to be found out in the question. Should be very specific, uh, specific about that one. Because most of the cases, many students are getting confused in understanding the question itself. Right? Don't do that mistake after that. After understanding the question and after finding out what exactly is to be found out, my next job is to start with statement 1 and try to answer the question. Alright? Try to answer the question conformly. This is important, right? What do you mean by conformly? 
you should get only one answer for that one if you are starting with one or two whatever it may be but take it as a custom first start with statement uh, one for example the meaning of uh, uh, solving the question conformly conformly means suppose the question is given in this way what is the age of a is the question all right when you are starting with statement one you need to solve the question as i told you repeatedly i am telling you conformly conformly means if it is what is the age of a with the help of this one if you solve the question you should get one conformed value absolute value for example you got a age of a with this clue is 30 years enough you should get 30 or conformly 40 or conformly 50 conformly x years you have to go in this way but it should not be that it should not be either 30 or 40 if you get in that way it means that this data are not sufficient to answer the question Hope you got the idea, right? Now, even if you try with second one also, you should do in this way. This is the first one, you should get the answer conformly. Then after that, how to mark the option? How to mark the option? Now, let us go in this way. When to go for option number one? Option number one. I am just writing here. Option number one means uh, you should take in this way. First, first, question, I understood the question. Then after that, start with the statement 1 right statement 1 then this is statement 2 right now start the question with statement 1 right then you tried the question for example you say you got the answer you got the answer confirmed answer make a tick mark here that I conformly solved the question then after that go for second one with the second one second statement alone and try to answer the question one important thing is that once you are solving the question with second one, don't be under the influence of the first statement because first is independent and second is also independent. Now you try with the second and try to solve the question. Suppose you are not able to answer the question, mark a cross mark. What is the meaning of this one? One is sufficient whereas two is not sufficient. My answer is uh, one alone is sufficient to answer the question. If the options are the sequence, what, it, what I have given just now, if the sequence is in this way, my answer is option number 1. Means 1 alone is sufficient, 2 alone is not sufficient to answer the question. Finish. In this case, you need not go for further probe in this case. Close this one. When to go for the second option? The same thing here. First, try with 1, right? If I am not able to answer the first one, answer with the first one. Now, while going with the second one, don't be in the under the influence of the first one. Second one is completely separate entity. Start with the second one and try with that. Suppose you are able to answer that one. Finish. Now you need not go for further investigation in this case. Here my answer is one is not sufficient alone, two is sufficient alone to answer the question. My answer is two alone is sufficient to answer the question whereas one alone is not sufficient to answer the question. If the options are in the same sequence, my answer would be option number 2. Or the sequence is changed, you need to go for that one accordingly. But final answer is 2 alone is sufficient in this case. 1 alone is sufficient in this case. Then when to go for the third option? The third option says like this. With one statement, one I tried the question, I can answer the question. Make a tick mark. Right? Forget about the first one. Don't be under the influence of that. Go for the second one. Now start with the second one. Second one also you are able to answer that one. See the fun here. Now with the help of one, I am able to answer the question and with the help of two alone also I am able to answer the question. In this case my answer is either one alone or two alone is sufficient to answer the question conformly. Now in this case my answer is going to be option number three. Either one alone or two alone. But one thing should be remembered here, right? So that is while solving with this first one, you solved it conformly, right? You got an answer. It does not mean that same answer should be repeated in the second case. Alright? That means, for example, take the same question, what is the age of A? Right? With the help of statement 1, I got the conformed answer and I got it to be 30 years. It does not mean that in the second case also you should get the same 30 years. Maybe, may not be. Conformly here answer is uh, 40 years. It doesn't matter for me, right? I am not at all concerned with the answer here. I am concerned with whether I am I able to solve the question or not with the help of the given information. That is the gist of 
data sufficiency. Now clearly in this case my answer is going to be either one alone is sufficient or two alone is sufficient even though the answers are not matching with each other as far as you got the conformed answer. Right? And sometimes you may get the same answer also. It doesn't matter. Now these three cases are straightforward cases. Right? I just repeat this one before going for fourth and fifth option which are considered to be a little important for you. Now the first option is one is sufficient to answer the question independently whereas two is not sufficient. Option one further probe is not required. In this case vice versa option two. Then option number three one alone is sufficient as well as two alone is sufficient. In this case option number three is the right one. Now let's go for the fourth option. When to go fourth option it's a little important one. So many students are getting confused here only to go for the fourth option as usual try with statement one right for example you, you try with statement one and you are not able to answer the question keep the cross mark then after that uh, independently go with second one even in this case you have not got the answer now in this case only in this case right only in this case you are supposed to combine the data combine both the data right here you need not combine not need not should not combine both the data because i got the answer here i got the answer here independently i got the answer i need not combine these two information right in this case when i'm not able to answer the question with this alone and not able to answer this one alone with this alone now in this case i should combine these two generally what happens this is separate clue and this is also separate when I'm not getting the answer with first one alone and second one alone, when you have combined these two, there is a possibility that you can get a, a new clue, a new clue. Now, you should try to answer the question with the new clue. Suppose, after combining these two with the new clue also, you are not able to answer the question. In this case, your answer is going to be neither one alone is sufficient nor two alone is sufficient to answer the question still more data are required still more data are required right i just repeat the case again i just repeat this one now this is sir first with one alone i'm not able to answer two alone i'm not able to answer after that my job is to combine these two even after combining these two also i'm not able to answer the question in this case no further probe is there your answer is going to be neither one alone is sufficient nor two alone is sufficient according to the options in the examination you go for that one generally the option for this one is option number four then when to go for option number five the same case a little extension of this one fifth one should be in this way with first one alone i have not got the answer with second one alone i have not got the answer now, now, right now in this case i need to combine these two after combining these two all after combining these two i am able to answer the question remember the difference between these two first case means fourth one one is not sufficient independently two is not sufficient even after combining these two also i am not able to answer the question option number four in this case sir, first one is not sufficient alone even second is also, uh, also not sufficient alone after combining these two i am able to answer the question in this case your answer is option number five many questions are option number five in most of the competitive exams Hope you got the idea. Now let us practice uh, some questions. In this session, I'll explain you like two or three questions, a typical type of question so that you can understand the question in a proper manner, right? But before going for this one, I want to conclude with by explaining this one in a nutshell. Let's go for this one. First, read the question properly and try with statement one. One is okay. Second is not okay. One. Vice versa. Two. Independently, this is this can answer the question. This can answer the question independently, right? Answer need not be the same. In this case, option number three. And with one, I'm not able to answer. Two also alone, I'm not able to answer. Even after combining these two, I'm not able to answer. Four. The other case, sir. After combining these two, I'm able to answer the question. Option number five. But remember, combination is required only in these two cases when one is not sufficient alone. 2 is not sufficient alone, only in this case the combination is required, otherwise there is no need to combine the information in these 3 cases. Hope you got the idea, this is the crystal clear way to go for data sufficiency questions. Just try with this one, you can get all the questions correct in the examination. 
Now, let me explain you a simple and basic level question based on this one. How to use the information, right? Now, the first question I'll tell you. The first one. Suppose, they are given in this way. What is the, right? A simple question will take. What is the, uh, what is the position of, let us take Kiran. What is the position of Kiran from the ticket counter? Ticket counter in a queue is the question, right? So my handwriting is not good. Please bear with that one, right? So now, what is? I'll just read it for you. What is the position of Kiran from the ticket counter in a queue? Is the question, right? Now. Statement 1 says, uh, Kiran is, uh, uh, let us take uh, 16th from the, from the end of the queue, end of the queue. The second information is given, Kiran is uh, exactly in the middle of the queue. They have given middle of the queue. Alright, just read the question for you again. What is the position of Kiran from the ticket counter in a queue is the question. The first statement is Kiran is 16th from the end of the queue. Second is Kiran is in the middle of the, exactly in the middle of the queue. Now, how to go for this one? Since it is the first question, let us go uh, comprehensively. I'll just explain you what should be the method. What should be the method? Always go in this way. Always go in this way. The first point is read the question properly. I've read this one. Reading is not sufficient, but you need to understand that one properly. What is the position of Kiran from the ticket counter like in a queue? Now, let us imagine in this way. Let us imagine in this way. Now, this is the ticket counter. This is the ticket counter. So, these are the people standing in the queue. And the question is, uh, somewhere, Kiran is somewhere here. Kiran is somewhere here. Now, the question is, what is the position of Kiran from the ticket counter, from here to here? What is his position? Is the question. You need to understand this one. You need to visualize this one first. Then after that, after that, uh, you need to question yourselves in this way. Now I need to find out what is the position of Kiran from the ticket window. To answer this question, which data are required for me? That should be done, right? Which data are required for me specifically to solve this question? Most of the students say the answer immediately. Even now I am asking you, right? in front of your computers or in front of your laptops. You should like, uh, immediately you must have got this one. Immediately you must have got this one. What data, which data are required for me to solve the question? You could have got that one as what is the total number of students or what is the total number of persons in the queue? Yes or no? You must have got that one, right? Now, that is not required. That is not required. I don't need total number of persons to solve this one, right? I, you need to be very specific here. Now, the question is what is the Position of Kiran from the ticket window, ticket counter. To answer this one, I don't need the total number of persons, right? What do I do with these people? My question is not that one. My question is, what is the position of Kiran from the ticket counter means you should know, you should know how many persons are there between these two. That is the point here, right? Suppose if there are, if there are 10 persons here from window to Kiran, your answer is going to be Kiran is 11th from the ticket counter, right? 11 persons are there. Your answer is 12th from the ticket counter. X number of people are there. Your answer is X plus 1th position is the right one. I hope you got the idea. Just don't go for what, how many like uh, uh, persons are in the queue. Of course, that the, with that one also you can answer, but that is not required. I need how many are there between these two. Between these two, with the help of this, I can answer the question. One thing is clear. You understood the question and you like found out what to be exactly found out in the question and which data are required for me. The required data are how many persons are there before window and means between window and the Kiran. This is the given one, right? So now, what are the data they have given? What are the data they have given? I am trying with the first one. I am trying with first one. What are the first data here? Now, first data I told you. Kiran was or Kiran is 16th from the end of the queue. When Kiran is 16th from the end of the queue, Kiran is somewhere here, 16th from the end of the queue, easily I can say, 
after Kiran, after Kiran, 15 persons are there. Only then he is 16th from the end of the queue. His position is 16. So I can know that uh, after Kiran total, 15 persons are there. Right. Now, after Kiran, 15 persons are there. It is not sufficient for me to answer the question because I need the figure here, not here. So, one is uh, not sufficient to answer the question. Right. Now, one is not sufficient. Over. I am going with the second one independently. When you are going with the second one independently, obviously you should not be under the influence of the first one. Now I am going with the second one. What are the second data? Second data says that now this is the window. Kiran is somewhere here. All these are persons. Right. The second data says Kiran is exactly in the middle of the queue. Exactly in the middle of the queue means here x number of persons are there. Here also x number of persons. Am I able to solve the question with this alone is the point of concern here, right? Don't be under the influence of the first one. First one is over. Now, am I able to solve the question with this alone? Of course not. Why this is not? Because here you have given x that is superfluous. You have not given any value for x here. Just you told that how many people are here? Those many people are here. I am not able to answer the question. So what is the case now? With one alone, I am not able to answer the question. I am writing here. And with the two alone also, I am not able to answer the question. Now you see. Now I need the extension for this one. I cannot stop here because one alone is not sufficient. As well as two alone is not sufficient. In this case, I should combine the data. Now you observe here. When you combine this data, I got a new clue. What is a new clue here? After combining these two, instead of this x, I can obviously write this as 15. When it is 15, even this is also 15. Now, I am able to answer the question, Kiran is 16th from the ticket counter in the queue. How did I get the answer? I got the answer. With 1, I did not get the answer. Alone. With 2 alone, I did not get the answer. But after combining these two, I got the answer. So, my answer is option number 5 is the right one. Got, got the idea? I hope you got the idea, right? So, this is the way to go for this one. Don't get confused while going for this type of questions. This is the comprehensive explanation for data sufficiency, right? So, now, what we will do? This is a simple example. But I, I tried, like, uh, even though this is very simple example, I explained you, like, elaborated. Because, since it is the basic question and the starting one for us, for the explanation. Now, in the next session, what I am going to do, we will take... Uh, two to three examples, maximum three, or if possible, I'll take fourth example also. Four examples from the previous POs. Previous POs, probably I can take from SBA POs. And I'll explain you how they give the questions, where you need to stress upon, right? So let's just, you please practice that one. Just try to understand the concept and uh, wait for the next session. In the next session, I'm going to take four examples based on data sufficiency. Right. Thank you, friends. Thank you very much.